uh, as you can see, the lesson is on seven habits of highly effective Christians. Now, these are all habits that I must must do for Christians. These aren't options. Okay, I want you to be aware of that. Now, first things first, I want you to open up to Ephesians chapter five. Actually, no, I'm just going to read it. I'm sorry. I'm so used to just opening up the Bible every time I have to do this. Uh, Ephesians chapter five, verse fifteen to seventeen. The Bible says, "See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise." redeeming the time because the days are evil wherefore be not unwise but understanding what the will of the lord is who's heard the phrase time is money time is money okay it's time is limited we only have a certain amount of time here on this earth and then after that that you're done okay god's gonna tally up the score let's see how you did and that goes for every single person saved or lost now, our judgment is different than the unsaved world, and God's going to tally up our works and see how we did. And I'm hoping for your sake that this lesson will be a blessing to you, that you'll be able to better organize your day and have a better uh, approach for how you're going to, how to stay productive. Understand? Uh, now, it's been said that how we spend our days is how we spend our lives. And I, I'm, I'm hoping that after this lesson, you'll be a little bit more conscientious about how you're spending your time. Because... Your time and my time is limited. We only have so much time. And the Bible told us to not, uh, walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. Okay? Now, you need wisdom if you're going to spend your days accordingly, spend your days properly. Now, the Bible tells us to redeem time. There's judgment coming where God is going to look at all the things that you did or that you didn't do. And he's not going to be judging our sin up there. Our sin was judged at Calvary. He's going to be judging our works. Remember, the Bible says that our works are going to go through that fire. And whatever comes out is what you get. And you're, you yourself are going to be saved, yet so is, so is by fire. Okay? You're just, if, you, if you have no good works, you're going to come up to heaven smelling like hellfire. Amen? Now, you want to really use this, the time that God has given you uh, to, the, to the fullest effect. Okay, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret, secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Okay, we, we need to take this seriously. We live in a day and age where, where people are going so fast, yet, that, yet they're doing so little. You ever, you ever think about that? That we're not really getting much done. Okay, um, just look at how productive your days are, honestly. Honestly, what are you doing? Uh, there's good reason for us to try and redeem the time. There's really good reason for it. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 to 2, the Bible says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. If we're to redeem the time, uh, we have something to look forward to. Our days will be increased. Okay, uh, Good, wise living tends to prolong one's day. Okay, Hey, don't eat that. That's poison. I, I think it's wise not to pick up things off the floor and eat them. Amen. Well, there's a lot of other things you should or shouldn't be doing that you need wisdom to know about, that you need wisdom for. And if we want to have prolonged days and, and peace in our life, it's best that we have wisdom and, we, and we, we consider all these things, okay? Don't forget the word. This is what we're supposed to base our entire lives upon. Ergo, this is what you're supposed to base your days upon. Amen. Okay? So we're going to go, ahead and, we're going to go over seven habits that are very necessary for Christians. The Bible tells us uh, to... to Verse, uh, Psalms 90 verse 12 so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom unto wisdom okay we we have to number our days we need to have a set schedule we need to know what's on the agenda for the day we need to know what okay this is what I got to do this is on the agenda this is what needs to get done and you inch a little bit for a little bit more and you progress and you progress and that's how it's supposed to go you're not supposed to just all right this is everything I want to get done in the year and then you never get it done the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. And let me know if you need me to repeat myself because I'm going to be going pretty quick. 1 Corinthians 14, 40. The Bible says, let all things be done decently and in order. Okay, God is methodical. He doesn't just throw everything to the wall and, sees what stick, and see what sticks. Okay, we need to be doing things in the right order, in the right time. Uh, you can write this down. I won't take you there, but uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. You can write that, that verses 1 to 8. That whole chapter is also is really good on time. It just shows you that there's a, there's a time and a place for everything. 
Okay, there's a time to do this. There's a time to do that. There's a time that you got to make sure it's the right timing. Okay, remember, Satan was trying to give Jesus the kingdom, and it was rightfully Jesus's kingdom, but it wasn't the right time. Right. Okay, that's Luke chapter four, Matthew chapter four as well. Uh, it's all about timing. So much of what, so much of your life depends on proper timing. Otherwise, it's not music anymore. It's a cacophony. Yeah. Amen. Timing is so crucial for how you go about your living your life. So I'm going to go over the seven things, seven highly habits of seven habits of highly effective Christians. OK, and these are all non-negotiables. These are all things you every single person listening to me, if they're saved, must adhere to. This is everything that they must put in their schedule. If you're not doing this, if this isn't on your schedule, you're you're doing something wrong. And, and actually, you're even in sin. OK, now. The first habit of a highly effective Christian is prayer and thanksgiving. Prayer and thanksgiving. Every Christian must do that. Prayer and thanksgiving. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, to pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. Our days are supposed to be filled with prayer. Okay? When was the last time you prayed? When was the last time you asked the Lord, hey, God, get me home safely? Hey, God, I need your help, please. I'm about to tie my shoe. If I bend down and break my back, God, I need your grace, Father. Uh, hey, why don't you pray like that? Amen? Um, prayer is important. Prayer is necessary. Okay, if God tells us in his book to pray without ceasing, I think it I think it's important. Uh, Philippians 4, 6, be careful, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, Amen. with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. You want to know something interesting? It, I've noticed that uh, the lost Gentile world, the lost world. Uh, lost sinners out there they they try and grasp at something that's spiritual and apply it to themselves yeah. okay if you've noticed a lot of uh there's like trends in in how people want to uh i don't know people like have a fixation nowadays on being hyper productive and being hyper you know I, I i'm always on time and i have my journal in the in the morning and i'm always up at 5 30 and i'm always doing this and that and and, and my schedule is so condensed i you know 6 53 i gotta go sneeze be, i'll be right back a chew 6 54 i gotta blow my nose and all that you know people have these this this hyper tuned fixation on just being productive right and you know what's interesting one of the things that they do for for building their routines because routine is important and I'm gonna be teaching a lesson on that next week but routine is important routine is very important and you know what's very interesting they always tell you that in the mornings in the mornings you should get up you should get out of bed go outside and just take a walk and just think about what you're thankful for isn't that you know they're, they're they're trying to get the Bible but they're trying to do it through their own worldly means that God tells us go to mark chapter 1 you turn with me there. I want you to look at this. Mark chapter 1. Okay? Because it's funny how lost sinners want to follow the Bible more than saved Christians do. Amen. Come on. Okay, go to Mark chapter 1. Lost sinners want to want to follow biblical principle, principles more than most Christians. And it's, it's sad but true. Go to Mark 135. And in the morning, rising up, rising up a great while before day, he went out. This is talking about Jesus. Before the day even got started, Jesus Christ got out of bed. How hard is that for most Christians? I struggle. Amen? Let's admit it. Let's be honest. It's hard getting out of bed. Oh, yeah. Sleep by design is sweet. It, it, that's how it is. Okay, but Jesus, he got out of bed. He went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. First thing he did when he got up in the morning is got up, got out of bed, left the house, prayed up. All right, and I'm assuming he, he thanked God for all the things that that God has done for him. Okay, where being thankful does something to you spiritually. Being thankful to God for the good times and even the bad times helps. Being thankful with prayer and thanksgiving, uh, you need you need that. It's not an option. Okay, otherwise you get bitter. Otherwise you just start getting. Uh, contentious and covetous and you just think that everything that is going on in your life is just oh why would you let this happen to me God 
I don't deserve this. Instead of thinking about all the things that God has done for you. Okay? People in prison can be more thankful for what God has done for them than some Christians can. Now, we need to be thankful. We need to pray every day. Pray without ceasing. You know, David, he prayed three times a day. He prayed, and he, by the way, David was thankful seven times a day. He thanked God seven times a day. Uh, let me see if I have that verse. Nah, it's, uh, you, I'll, I'll give it to you, but you, we're not going to turn there. Give me a second. Pray, pray, pray. Thank God. You know what? I don't want to lose track. I don't want to lose pace, so let's, we'll go to it some other day. Um, now, the next thing that you need to be doing every single day, every, the next habit you need to start forming is reading your Bible and studying your Bible. Reading and studying. That's not an option. That's not optional. Every day, Bible study. The Bible tells us to study to show ourselves approved unto God. Okay? Uh, funny how most, most modern versions take that word out, study. Because they don't want you to study. Uh, we're supposed to study. God, he, he, he's going to ask us how much did we read our Bibles. Okay? He's going he's gonna to judge us if we were faithful on that or not. And I'm hoping that everyone is reading their Bibles at least at least once a day really and i'm not telling you to get ridiculous with it okay i'm not telling you I, if you're if you're reading if you're not reading three hours a day then you're sinning okay i understand that we all have different schedules and we have uh we, we don't you only have 24 hours in a day i don't know if any of you have another hour that i'm not privy to but we only have 24 and think about it like this all right we six to eight hours of sleep every night okay maybe for some of you that's generous but assuming you only get about six or six or eight hours what's left you have about what's that uh 16, 16 hours left to go in the day and then uh eight hours of working okay then now you're down to eight hours a day and that you it's starting to diminish really quickly right but is is, is god a priority in your life is he someone that is he is he the most is he what you prioritize above all else above everything in your life if he's not then you came to the right lesson, amen? <laughs> amen. Um, you need to be studying. You need to know what saith the scripture. Okay? Now, all this is basic stuff that you're already aware of. But I have to reiterate because uh, there's going to be people watching online that just, you know, they don't study their Bible every day. They don't pray every day. And, you know, I don't want to be one of those people that just assume that everyone knows that this, this is obvious. Because to some people, it's not. Now, reading and studying, why is that important? Well, the more the the more of that Bible you get into you, the more you start to stay away from sin. Uh, the Bible will keep you from sin, and sin will keep you from the Bible. Amen? Amen. Now, to go along with that, the next habit, and it gets more interesting as we go along. You've already heard all this stuff, but there's, you're not going to want to miss the next couple ones. Okay? But the the next thing is church. Church. Oh, are you serious? Yeah, church. It's not optional. Not it's non-negotiable. Okay, many people think that church is an option. It's not. Go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, if you have time. But Hebrews 10, 25, the Bible says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Okay, first off, there's going to be some Christians that say, Oh, that's in the book of Hebrews. That doesn't apply to us Christians. Okay, I can. how many, how many places in, in Paul's epistles can I show you where church attending is is scriptural attending church is scriptural okay it doesn't matter if it's in hebrews if it doesn't conflict with paul's writings then you know what that's our doctrine amen amen, amen. that's right church is not an option how many people did we invite that could have came today and they chose to sin yeah. that that's what they did okay they have they're not at church right now church is not an option if you're choosing to reject going to church you're choosing to sin it's not, you know, I hate to sound like, oh, that's legalistic. Hey, it's the Bible. Amen. Church is, it's not, I've had, I had a sermon, seven reasons not to, uh, seven things you miss when you miss church. And it's not for the pastor's sake. It's not for the, it's, it's for your sake to come to church. And you start to miss out spiritually. And believe you me, once you miss the first time, it's a lot easier to miss the second time. Oh, yeah. A lot easier. Oh, yeah. So that's why it's so important. When I started going, I never stopped going. That's why it's easy for me to come and do it every day. 
But for Christians that choose to just, ah, oh, I'm just too busy today. I'll come. I'll go next week. Sometimes there never is a next week. And sometimes that could be. The, I know a Christian that they left the church, and then after they left the church, they never came back, and their lives were completely ruined. Oh, yeah. I know. I know a person like that. And you'd be surprised what can happen to you if you get outside of God's will. Because really what these habits are designed for, they're supposed to keep you in God's perfect will. They're supposed to keep you uh, in God's good graces. And, and where are you going to get spiritual healing but at church? Okay, These are all things that are designed to get you closer to God. Now, the next place I want to take you to, uh, the next habit... And we're going to slow things down after this one because the, the next couple ones are going to be the interesting ones that I think online audience would really like. Uh, the next one you want to be doing, non-negotiable, is evangelizing. Okay, you can say soul winning, you can say teaching, you can say preaching, but you every Christian, it's not negotiable. Mark 16, verse 15, the Bible says, uh, and he said unto them, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature does, where where into that verse does it say he was only talking to the apostles yep. every single Christian is expected to spread the gospel as a matter of fact if every single Christian did their job it makes you wonder how soon how long ago we would have been raptured right. okay imagine that if every Christian did their job you know all right all that would have gotten saved got saved all right all that's left to do now is rapture us Jesus and he would have done it He's waiting for the last Christian to get saved. Remember, the Bible says God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But unfortunately, most Christians aren't keeping their end of the bargain. Most Christians are slacking. And you need to be evangelizing. You need to be, you need to be doing something for the cause of Christ. Understand? Let me, let me find a verse real quick. Yeah, okay, John chapter 9, verse 4. I don't have it written down, so turn with me there. John chapter 9, verse 4. On the same, when We're still talking about evangelism. John 9, verse 4. The Bible says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Okay, we, we have to work. We, we have work ahead of us, and not just any work. Not just anywhere. That's John 9, verse 4. Uh, go to Luke 2, 4, 9. Luke chapter 2, verse 49. I told you I'd be going through a lot of scripture. So write these down. If you're watching online, feel free to pause. But uh, I don't have time to just uh, slow things down. The Bible says in Luke chapter 2, verse 49. Uh, and he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Now remember, Mary's just looking for Jesus. And here's Jesus just talking to all the, all the Jews in the temple. Or at the uh, synagogue. And, he, and he's, just, he's just schooling these guys. And Mary's just like, what is going on here? Because this is just little Jesus. She, she, she knew that this kid was special. But she wasn't expecting something like this. And then Jesus just tells her, I'm about my father's business. Amen. 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 Are you about your father's business? You got work to do. If you're not about your father's business, see, I can say it right. <laughs> if you're not about your father's business, then I'm sorry, you're not a very effective Christian. And if we live in a day and age where everyone wants to be hyper effective and just, uh, you know, brag about how much they're doing for, you know, themselves, why not do something for the Lord instead? Amen. You see, God expects some things from us. He expects us to just, uh, we got bought with a price. We're no longer our own. Amen? Amen. But we're so reluctant to actually get down on our knees and, and, and pray and, and read our Bible. and Listen, none of these things are, are monumental for any other person. You know, it's just praying. It's just reading. If, if God, What if God asked you to do something difficult? What if he asked you to do something like, you know, get a degree in rocket science and then you'll be right with me? He doesn't ask us to do those hard things. Right. But I'm sure if he did, then most Christians would be more faithful. Remember, what was it, Naaman? When, when he went to uh, Elisha, and Elisha just said, yeah, go wash yourself seven times. And he got mad. And then his servant was like, what if, I mean, if he asked you to do something difficult, wouldn't you have done it? And he's like, yeah. So why not do it if it's easy? Right. It's easy to serve the Lord. Amen. It's just, <laughs> your flesh doesn't want to make it easy. Right. Um, 
Now, finally, the fifth habit. The fifth habit, and really these are things that every Christian needs to be doing every day. Every day. Now, obviously, church isn't every day, but the next thing you have to be doing every single day is, is laboring. Besides the Sabbath day. Because <laughs> we're Seventh-day Adventists. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you need to be working. Okay? No food, no work. Or no work, no food. Every Christian is expected to do something. Uh, when you get a dog, and I like comparing people to dogs because the Bible does it. <laughs> uh, when you get a dog, you need to give that dog a job. Otherwise, it's not going to be a well-behaved dog. <laughs> you need to train that dog up. You don't just raise it. You train it. Just like you train children. You don't raise them. And we're expected to work. We're expected to have a duty to fulfill. And if you're not fulfilling that duty, well, you know what? Then you don't get to eat. We need to work. We need to take it seriously. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4.12, And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer it. You know, there's a lot of Christians that don't want to work. They want to get buy the easy way. They want to just make money like cut corners. They want to do it like uh, I don't know. Like, hey, hey you want to do some, you want to get into drop shipping with me? You heard of drop shipping? <laughs> yeah, you've heard of that. I so have. They want to do, you know, they want to do all sorts of ways to get rich without actually working. And Apostle Paul, listen, work with your hands. And I get, I get it. A lot of people, a lot of us are just, we don't have the physical capability anymore. So why don't you work with your prayer? I need prayer right now. You got time? Pray. You know, the, the, you can get creative. If God, if God sees that you're working, if you're honestly and sincerely trying to just, uh, you know, work and do what you can, don't you think he'll honor that? God wants us to work. The Bible says in Proverbs 20, verse 13, write this down. Proverbs 20, verse 13, love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. Wake up. Get out of bed. Roll out if you have to. But just get on your feet. Remember Jesus in Mark verse one, in chapter 1, verse 35, he rose up. He got up. And he got out. When you find... I don't know if there's uh, studies on this, but I found that when you get... When you get stuck in the house and you just stay and you don't want to leave and you become a, re a recluse it becomes a lot harder to to i don't know to, to to go out there and do normal things and i've been there i i am there sometimes you know it, it becomes hard to socialize it becomes hard to connect with people it becomes hard to do all these things because you're not you you, you got to get out of the house you got to put yourself out there it's 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 not healthy for you it's not good for you to be stuck at home Okay, it's not it's not good for you to be stuck in bed, not wanting to get out. You listen, you know how hard it is to get out of bed sometimes for me. It's hard because the day the day after the, the day coming is just why well, I, I I got so much work and I just got no hope in this. I got, I don't want to do this. It's just too tough. And you don't and you just start beating yourself up over it and you start getting uh, negative and and you you stop seeing how there can be a blessing in it. But you got to get up. You got to get out. Okay, go to Proverbs 24, verse 30 to 4, 34. Turn with me there. You, need, you you gotta be a highly effective Christian if you wanna get a lot of the judgment. You know, have you ever seen some of these, like, billionaire CEOs and, and they, like, have their more, their routines or their schedules out online and you can see what they do on a, on a regular basis? And, like, it's so crazy how, how much they got to do in one day that, like, almost... Almost every minute is like planned. Like they do it in like five minute increments. We're like, okay, I gotta, do, I gotta wake up at four thirty in the morning, and then five, uh, four thirty five, I gotta make myself, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> a, a, a juice mix or whatever. And and, and it, everything is so fine tuned and so over the top, really. And I'm not telling you to be that effective. Although if you were, imagine what you'd get at the judgment if you d if you took it that seriously. Like a billionaire CEO takes their their their, I don't know, their empire seriously. How seriously do you take it? Proverbs chapter 24, give me a second. See, I told you it starts getting better. It starts getting more interesting. Chapter 24, verse 30 to 34. I saw this one this morning when I was reading Proverbs. I went by the field of the slothful 
and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles, had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that tra uh, tra traveleth, and they and they want as an armed man. I remember when I was young, my, my dad took me to downtown and he showed me all the homeless people down there in their tents and just how miserable it looked and just said, you know, you want to make something of yourself or you want to be with, the, with, with them? And... You know, you you gotta you gotta take your future seriously. It's not you only get one. It's not a video game. You don't have three lives, and then you only get one. And I know sometimes it can be very disheartening because you can't see how how you have a future here in California where rent is three thousand dollars a month for a two bedroom apartment in Imperial Beach. You believe that? Three thousand a month. I just looked today, and you start to lose hope. But if you, if you look at the bulletins I gave you, I gave you a verse that I want you to memorize. Okay? Philippians 4.19, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Okay? God will provide all your needs. He just wants to see if you're, if you're looking for it. He just wants to see if, you, if you're trying to work. Okay? And I could take you to so many parables about it, but, you know, we, we don't have that time. I need you to take this seriously. Not just your work, but but the ministry. Okay, this the, we're laboring in the word here, and if you're not taking seri taking it seriously, then then you know we we're short a person. Okay, and I want as I'm going to segue into the next habit that you need to be focusing on. I want you to understand something. Okay, this verse right there. Yeah, you need to labor, but also you need to be a good steward. Be a good steward. Okay. The Bible says in Luke 12, Luke 12, chapter 42, uh, Luke 12, verse 42 to 48. Turn with me if you can. Forty-two to forty-eight. The Bible says, And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is the is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But, and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and, ma and maidens, and to eat and drink, and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew it, that knew not, and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required. And to whom men uh, have committed much of him, they will ask more, or ask the more. Now, we can't take everything in that passage for us because we, we're, our salvation isn't at stake. And yeah, I know that, okay? But listen, you can get a spiritual application from this, okay? You, you are expected to be a good steward with the, what the Lord has given you, okay? And the Lord's given you a lot. What country do you live in? Did you forget? What country do you live in? America, okay? You realize that what we have isn't normal in most of the world? The fact that we're meeting at a park under a tent without any stress, without any fear of persecution like you would get in Iran, that's not normal. And the Lord has blessed us with something. And we're expect. listen, we speak English. You realize that's the global language? That's the language of commerce? We have, we have so much and yet we do so little with it. Okay, you want to be a good steward to what the Lord has given you. And more importantly, you want to be looking. You should be expecting Christ's return at any moment. Because the moment you stop you stop looking for him, man. Imagine that. The moment that you stop, you stop in the faith. The moment that you stop looking for Christ in your life as the moment that he shows up, how heartbroken would you be? If if he comes at that moment where you're just like, I give up. Okay? 
Uh, the Bible says is uh, the man that falls seven times and, and rises up again, that guy's blessed. Okay? You, you want to be a, a good steward. And 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, I want to, I want to show you something. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God? And ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Okay, God, he tells you that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And you're expected to treat that temple right. Okay? We have to be good stewards over what God has given us. That includes ourselves. And the world, they want to tell, they, they're calling it now, they have a phrase for it now. It's called self-care. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Uh, no, it's not about yourself. It's about what God gave you. And if you, do you know you're in a race right now? 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. The Bible says, uh, Know ye not that they which run in a race uh, run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but an incorruptible. Or I'm sorry. They, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run not as uncertainly, so fight I not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be, cast, be a castaway. Okay. We're in a race. It's not a it's not a hundred yard dash. It's a marathon. You gotta pace yourself. I, I realize that when you're a young Christian, you get really really zealous and you want to just do all these things for the Lord and, and, and you want to just go boom, 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 do this, do that, do I wanna to talk to everyone, I wanna get everything done. You're gonna burn out. Believe me, I, I've been there. You will burn out and, and what's going to happen is that you're going to start to get disillusioned and you're going to start to get discouraged and, and you're at danger of falling away. You're at danger of backsliding if you start to push yourself too hard. If you start to try and spread yourself too thin, put too many eggs in too many different baskets. There's a danger in that. And you're, you're in a race. You, you have no, you don't have the luxury of, of going at any pace you want. You got to take it slowly, methodical. Okay? Remember, everything in its right order. The Bible says in Galatians 6, 9, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. The Bible tells us don't be weary. Okay? Take it at a pace you can handle. Don't, don't compare yourself to others, by the way. I met a, I met a Christian over at uh, Gene Kim's blowout. His name is Aaron Kogel. And we're talking about our schedules and I he's and he shows me his schedule and he has like I, I kid you not an Excel spreadsheet with like everything he does throughout the week and everything was so you know 15 minutes apart everything was just so you do that all in one day you wake up what time and and hyper productive highly effective but don't compare yourself to that you build yourself up to it you think he started doing that day one no but you take steps you take steps First, it starts with the morning routine, it's been, and then it goes into the into the midday, and and you got to be wise. Remember, the Bible tells us to walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Wisdom is required. Okay, you need to be a good steward with the Lord's given you, and that includes the body that God gave you. Don't push yourself too hard. Don't overexert yourself because the best way to get at, if you're working out and lifting weights and all that, and you're and you're getting jacked, you know, or yoked. I don't know what they want to call it nowadays. But if you if you're if you're really, you know, pumping iron, the worst thing you can do is you can put stack too much on the you can stack too many plates on the bar, and then you and then you tear something. You overexerted yourself, and now you're out of the gym. If not for months, then maybe the rest of your life. You don't want to put yourself in that position. Okay, uh, the last place I want to, uh, the last thing I want to take you to is these aren't really habits; they're more so things that you just need to uh, attend to. But I wanted it for the catchy title. Oh, sorry. You want to attend to people in your life. You want to attend to people. Um. I'm sorry to say, but people in your life need attention too. It's not all about you. Okay, it's not about you today. I'm sorry. Um, the people that God has given you in your life, 
he, you know, something's expected of you. Now, remember, you're, he told all of us to go and preach the gospel. But, you know, you have people in your life that God expects you to, to uh, interact with. I'm sorry. Yeah, you, you, a lot of people nowadays are antisocial, but God expects you to interact with, with the people that are in your life. And uh, let, me, let, me, let me go down the list, okay? We're not supposed to isolate ourselves from each other. And sometimes uh, it's better for you. I know a lot of people want to get married, but sometimes it's better if you just stay single for the time being. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 7, 20, uh, 32 to 33, But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world and how he may please his wife. Now, Apostle Paul is talking about you know the difference between being single and married and how it's better to be, stay single. But it's not a sin to get married, but he'd prefer it and God would prefer it. You know, I'll just stay single. Why? Because you have more time to attend to the things of God. Because if you're married, you're ex there, there are some things that are expected of a married man. Okay, Paying attention to his wife is one of them. Uh, you have an obligation to the people around you who, who God has uh, yoked you up with. And if you're not fulfilling the obligation that God's put on you and called you in your life, then, then you're in sin. And you're not effective. You're not an effective Christian. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. And ye fathers... Provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. If you have kids, yeah, I think you're expected to be a father. You realize that, that in a lot of uh, parts of the country, there's not people don't know what a dad is. You know, a lot of kids, I know a lot of kids growing up, they didn't have dads in their life. You know, the best thing they had was an uncle. Uh, we live in a day and age where, where men don't want to be fathers. Men don't want to... Uh, man up they don't want to grow up and and as a result what ha what suffers is the next generation after and it devolves and devolves until finally there's a breaking point where listen look at look at the way, way we live in you think this would have happened if men weren't men or if if men were still being men and and, and actually fulfilled their obligations and live godly christian lives no it's because christians start getting let loose we started getting slack we started giving at, at the pulpit we started compromising and because of that well, look at what's uh, look at what's around us. Go look at that gay pride flag across City Hall. I think that would have been around about 30, 40 years ago. No, you have an obligation to fulfill the role God has given you in your life. Proverbs chapter eighteen, verse twenty-four: A man that hath friends must shew himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. If you got friends, go be a friend. Go go message that person. Hey, I haven't heard from you in a while. Are you doing all right? Hey, uh, you know, we got some free time. You want to come to church next week? We'll get you dinner. Hey, how have you been? I, I, I realize you've been going through a lot right now. Is there anything I can do to be a blessing to you? Everyone's so antisocial nowadays. They do anything to avoid human contact with each other. They do anything to avoid uh, vulnerability. And I, Guilty as charged. Guilty as charged. But that's not right. The Bible says in Hebrews 3.13, But exhort one another daily, while it is called, Today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Where is the burden you have for your family? Where is the burden you have for your friends, your loved ones, your co-workers? I, I realize it's not easy to put yourself out there and to be vulnerable in front of people. It's not easy for me. But do you, are you, do you want to? Are you willing to at least have the Lord put that on your heart? Or do you want to close up? You need to be an effective Christian. And if you want to do that, you gotta you gotta risk yourself to being hurt. You gotta put yourself at risk. Um, and the the last place I'm gonna take you is Proverbs chapter sixteen. Proverbs sixteen. That's the last place I'll take you. And then you can go to Wiener Schnitzel or wherever, wherever you want to go. I think that's not, yeah, I'll put that on the list of highly effective habits is going to Wiener Schnitzel. Oh, okay. Amen. Uh, Proverbs. Where, 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 where's the brother? Oh, I wasn't going to invite you guys. I was just going to go by myself oh, okay. like I always do. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Proverbs 16, verse 9. The Bible says, A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. You Don't stress out. Don't worry about it. 
Okay, if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, if you're following your these, if you're trying to build up these habits, and by the way, habits take time. Habits take time to build up. I believe it said 30, 30 days is how long it takes to form a habit. Well, you need you need consistency, and you don't have to worry though because God, He sees if He sees that you're trying and you're putting sincere effort and you really really do want it, He's guiding your steps. He's going to be the one taking you along that direction. He just wants to see where your heart is at. So where is your heart? Are you willing to Are you willing to just tell God, listen, I need I need you to take control of my day. I need you to form my day around you. I, I can't do it on my own strength. I can't do it according to my own flesh because my flesh is wicked. I need to do it in the spirit, Lord. I need your spirit because I can't do it alone. And if you, if you want that, God's going to give it to you. But he's expecting these things from you. He's expecting you to, to, to put a sincere effort in trying to attain these. Okay? He realizes your flesh. Okay? I remember there's a, there's a psalm where, where the psalmist is saying, Listen, remember, Lord, that I'm flesh. I'm just flesh, and I, I fall away in sin all the time, and actually, I might have it written down somewhere. Give me a second, because it's a very powerful verse. Yes, uh, Psalm chapter 78, verse 38. Turn with me there. Psalm 38. I know I said the last verse is my la uh, last verse, but this is the last one. Psalm 38, 78, verse 38. The Bible says... But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. Okay? God understands that you're flesh. God understands that you struggle. But where's your heart at? Where's your willingness to, to, to prioritize him in your life? All right, let's bow our heads.